This is Cascade Media Group, your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell here. Today I'm with Dr. John Mosley. This is our HBCU president series. Dr. Mosley is the president of the historic Lincoln University, located right here in our state, Jefferson City, Missouri. Welcome to the HBCU presidential series, Dr. Mosley. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I, I thank you very much for the opportunity to visit with you this afternoon. We, we are uh, grateful for having you. We, we are uh, hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about the Lincoln University program. Uh, can you tell us what's going on there currently? It's uh, we're, we're in the middle of uh, preparation for uh, fall of 21. And uh, we, we are finishing up summer school here uh, over the next week, week and a half um, and expect a, a, a freshman class to arrive uh, August the 6th in preparation for class beginning uh, August the 16th. And so uh, a lot of behind the scenes work taking place right now, a lot of planning uh, and, and excitement uh, as we approach the, the new school year. You talk about behind the scenes. Let's expand on that for a moment. We know that technology is making this recording, this Zoom meeting happen. We also know that we are relying a little bit more on technology because of COVID-19. What current challenges might the university be facing and preparing for these students head, who are heading back for their school year? You know, there's just, uh, there's so much uncertainty that surrounds COVID-19 uh, even today. You know, uh, here in the state of Missouri in the last uh, two to three weeks, we've seen an uptick in cases uh, specifically related to the Delta variant. And, uh, and, and so um, there's a lot, of, a lot of meetings taking place, a lot of contingency plans. Uh, you know, fortunately, we, we, we went through something similar last year. And so we've got we've got that to, to rely on. Uh, but this is a, a brand new experience. I, I think right now um, this uptick in Delta variant uh, has uh, has caused many a greater concern than really what we experienced last year because uh, the number of people that are the breakthrough cases, those that have been vaccinated, uh, who who maybe aren't getting as sick this time around, but yet and still uh, we understand that COVID is still uh, out there and affecting uh, many of our constituents, many of our communities, many of the communities that our students are coming from. And so uh, we've got to make sure that we've got the necessary plans in place as they begin to arrive on campus that we can meet the needs of our students and, and our faculty and our staff. So staff and students, they are safe on campus there this year. Yeah, that's the that's the goal. You know, that's the goal every year. Uh, obviously, we, we COVID has has given us a new challenge, but that's the goal every year when you start a, a, a school year is to make sure that you do everything in your power as administration uh, to ensure the safety of all of your constituents. And so, uh, you know, we, we had a the university had a really good plan last year um, and we were really fortunate here at Lincoln last year. We had uh, a few cases, but it never really got to a point that we had to panic uh, about what was going on. Um, we have got residence halls that uh, we've set aside to, to allow us to quarantine, uh, to allow us to isolate. And so, uh, and, and I thought our staff did a really good job last year. Um, and, and I think having the summer break has, has certainly helped because um, not only Lincoln, but many of our schools felt a, a, a COVID fatigue almost uh, towards the end of the school year uh, of 21 because uh, of all the extra steps and extra pressure uh, that many of our many of our faculty and staff and students had experienced uh, as a result of uh, COVID, and so um, it's a, it's certainly a challenge. Uh, I, I think we we try to go into this school year with with hopes that we can do more, have more activities, um, but but we we reserve the 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 temptation to to think that it's over. Uh, we understand that there's going to be times where uh, maybe it's more prevalent on our campus than others. Uh, I know listening to our state leaders, um, we're, we're expecting a peak here in Jefferson City somewhere around August 23rd, which is shortly after the school year begins. And so, uh, you know, we're watching things very closely as we get closer to, to August 16th and the first day of classes. I understand you're saying that preparation is key and it's always better to err on the side of caution. Uh, Dr. Mosley, um, recently here in the call, there was an article, I believe last week, about HBCUs and enrollment being low. Now, I know COVID, uh, to kind of change directions here a little bit, I know COVID might have affected the enrollment numbers. What is, what is Lincoln University doing in general specifically, can you tell me, to increase enrollment numbers, to bring those 
attending numbers back up? Yeah, well, uh, you know, great question. I, I think every one of our, our universities, uh, especially our, our, our HBCUs, have uh, felt the impact of COVID in their student populations. Um, you know, here at Lincoln, we, we sit in, a, 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 in the middle of Jefferson City, the capital city of Missouri. Um, and, and so uh, I was looking just yesterday, we're one of the most diverse uh, institutions in the country. We're one of the most diverse HBCUs. And so we've seen, we've seen issues in uh, recruiting or in, in uh, uh, enrollment um, from both our local students as well as our residential students. So, you know, mo the majority, the overwhelming majority of our residential students come to Lincoln uh, for the HBCU experience. And so um, we have to be, I, I got into this seat as the interim uh, in, in May 22nd. And, uh, and I know, so we, we had, uh, this administration has had minimal impact on uh, fall enrollment. We've, we've done all we can to reach out to students that had applied and been accepted and to try to get all of their, uh, their necessary paperwork in, to get them through the new student orientation uh, and assigned to an advisor in preparation for classes. And so um, those, those efforts are, are still ongoing as we sit here uh, in July and, and, uh, and visit today. We, we, we still have an admissions team that's reaching out to prospective students to say, um, we'd love for Lincoln University to be your school of choice. And so uh, we'll be doing that up until the last minute um, to, to maximize the number of students that we have here at Lincoln. And, uh, you know, and then at the same time, we, we're beginning to build our plan to recruit students for the 21-22 school year. So the class of 22 becomes our focus uh, immediately upon the start of classes with, with this year's uh, fall of 21. Wow. Uh, Dr. Mosley, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, a little bit about your educational background. Why did you pursue higher education? Why the doctorate in higher education? And how did you end up at HBCU? You know, it's, uh, it's a great question. I know for your viewers uh, to, to think about uh, the series that you're conducting and you look on your computer and you see me uh, as an interim president at HBCU. Um, a little bit about me as quickly as I can. I'm, I'm from Warrington, North Carolina. Uh, I'm from a majority minority community. And so I, I grew up in a space where uh, I was in the minority from uh, elementary school on. And so uh, after, after high school, I went to East Carolina University. I got my degree in uh, physical education. I got a master's degree in athletic administration. Um, I wanted to coach basketball. That was my passion. Uh, that's what brought me to Lincoln. I, I, coached, uh, I coached here for seven years. I coached the men's basketball program. Uh, I was the director of athletics for six of those years in, in addition to, to my coaching responsibilities. Um, in 2015, uh, 2016, um, then President Kevin Rome, who had brought me to Jefferson City and gave me the opportunity to serve in those other two roles, uh, encouraged me to pursue my terminal degree. Uh, and so uh, I did. Uh, my wife is an instructor here at Lincoln uh, in health and wellness. And so she and I both enrolled at the University of Missouri uh, in their educational leadership and policy analysis program. And so uh, we were fortunate to, to graduate together. It's one of the best stories of my life. It, it, uh, we've been married for 21 years. We both achieved that degree at the same time. It was an honor to graduate with her, uh, not knowing that uh, really when I began this program, um, how I would actually ever use it. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily need a doctorate to continue to coach or to serve as an athletic director. Um, but Dr. Rome taught me at one point that uh, once you have it, uh, you know, uh, it, it can't be taken away from you. And so uh, I felt uh, as a coach, uh, educating young men, uh, especially young uh, minority men, um, if I'm going to teach the value of an education to them, uh, the best way to demonstrate that is to, is to be the student myself and let them get to see uh, their coach going through uh, classes, working on papers, conducting research. And so uh, I, I was very successful as a coach in helping young men uh, achieve their educations uh, to get their degrees, it's one of uh, the highlights of my coaching career. In addition to the wins, the biggest wins come when you can see your players graduate. And now I'm fortunate to sit in this seat as the interim uh, and, and now challenge uh, our student body to, to get to the point where you're graduating. It's such a fun day. Uh, I, I like to talk to our incoming freshmen about um, seeing themselves at graduation and having their families just be so proud of them and what that feeling is like. And so uh, that's my, my life work now is in, in this capacity is to try to do all I can to uh, help our faculty and staff, um, to take care of our faculty and staff so that they take care of our students and so that we can continue to, to put out um, successful young people into, into careers. Now you mentioned uh, uh, being the coach 
Uh, we talk about higher education. We promote higher education here at Cascade Media Group. Uh, encourage young men, especially young men, passion for young men, pursuing their education as a bridge pathway to uh, their, their dreams after high school, uh, after college. What is the most important lesson, Coach Mosley, that you learn as a coach? Uh, you know, again, I, as a coach, your players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think once people know that you care about them, mm -hmm. uh, that you have their best interests at heart, uh, you know, then they're willing to, to listen to you. And so uh, obviously uh, because of who I am and uh, uh, maybe maybe there's a uh, not initially a trust, uh, initial trust level there, uh, I have to earn their trust because we all come from different backgrounds. And so I understand that. And uh, but I, 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 I realize that everybody brings their own life to the relationship. And so their life, their life experiences matter. Um, and so just loving people for who they are, um, giving people an opportunity uh, is important. And so I just believe that um, some people need the challenge and the, and the direction. Uh, and once you provide them with that, uh, they can the sky's the limit. You know, I, I, I believe in the value of education. I, I believe that uh, education not only changes the life of that student, but it changes the lives of generations after them once they achieve it. And so uh, I know myself, I'm a first generation college student. Um, I was fortunate neither of my parents went to a four year institution or two year institution, matter of fact. And so uh, my brother, sister and I, I'm the youngest of three. We all got to experience that. Um, not everybody grows up necessarily with with that environment, to, the, the expectation that uh, you're going to you're going to go to college. Um, but that was really set in our, in our future from parents that didn't get the chances that we got. And so uh, I share that experience with many of our students. Um, because though our backgrounds may be different, uh, we have more in common than, than maybe sometimes people want to want to uh, talk about. And so uh, it's not it's not a, as cool of a story necessarily to say, um, what do we share? And so uh, we've got a great group of, of young people here that are pursuing their dreams um, through education and through their their own hobbies. And uh, we just want to we just want to provide the environment that, that they can be successful in. Now, uh, I, I want to say that uh, classic Lincoln, uh, it does take a community to build that uh, education is important mentality. Um, I grew up, uh, my next door neighbor was a Lincoln graduate. My mom, Lincoln graduate, both education. Uh, my godmother, um, they both pledged, AKA. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so I mean, the educators in the family, you know, I couldn't turn around without running into someone who graduated from Central High School or, or Lincoln High School. But this is a little while ago. Um, what is Lincoln University doing today? Uh, what's going on on campus today? And, uh, uh, how are we preparing our next generation of Blue Tigers? Yeah, so uh, there's a lot going on. You know, we uh, uh, just in, in the past year, we founded the only law enforcement training academy on an HBCU campus, uh, Chief Gary Hill has done an outstanding job. That program has received national acclaim. Uh, we've had every, every major news organization has come through our campus at some point. We had our first graduating class in June of 2021, uh, where we graduated nine officers. Um, and, and, and their training is, is similar in a lot of ways to, to police training across the country. But then the biggest difference is uh, Coach, I mean, Chief Hill uh, and, and his, and his uh, instructional staff uh, also address some of the social justice issues that uh, maybe aren't covered in, in other uh, law enforcement uh, academies. And so it's, uh, it's been a really neat program to watch grow. Uh, there's a need for more minority officers in our communities, um, much like there's a need for minority teachers in minority communities. You know, I'm a big proponent of education. Uh, I was an education major myself. And, uh, and my wife and I are in full support of uh, trying to help educate um, college students to become teachers so that uh, young people see someone in their classroom that looks like them in their first three years you know, of, of, of elementary school. There's research that shows if, uh, if the teacher looks like the students, that the students are more successful. And so um, there's a need for teachers in general, but there's also especially a need for minority teachers and so uh, Lincoln has, has, has been in the business of education now uh, for over 155 years. Uh, and, and so education has been a, a big part of what we do. Our School of Nursing is one of the best in the state of Missouri. 
Uh, we have 100% job placement. Uh, over 80% of our nurses um, pass the state boards on their first try. And so that program has been outstanding. And then Lincoln's an 1890 land grant institution. Uh, Ag and extension are big parts of what we do. Uh, we have agriculture and extension offices in uh, Kansas City, in St. Louis, and down in the Boot Hill. Uh, and so, um, you know, we've got a, a ton of agriculture scholarships available for students that are looking for an opportunity to further their education. Uh, and I know that many of our students are young people when they hear agriculture, they only think it, you can farm. And while farming is important because we've got to get our food from somewhere, there's many different careers in agriculture that are essential to, uh, to our success and our viability as human beings. And so uh, I, I encourage any, any young high school student that's looking right now um, to check out agriculture degrees to see if there's, there's an interest there because uh, we, have, we have a lot of full scholarships available that cover uh, tuition and fees and room and board. And so, um, you know, there's, there's a need for, for people in those fields. And so the federal government has stepped up at 1890 institutions to, to help us provide scholarships for students. Well, there you go, Cascade Media family. If you are interested in exploring uh, a college, if you're looking at uh, a college, attending college, and maybe in high school, Lincoln University, Jefferson City has a lot to offer you. Now, uh, Dr. Mosley, I know that you're a busy man. I won't belabor you. I will give you the final words here. Hey, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. Lincoln's an awesome place. Uh, we, we, we take pride in being the only institution in the country founded by soldiers of the Civil War. We were founded by the, the soldiers of the 62nd and 65th Colored Infantries, uh, who, who started Lincoln with the help of two white lieutenants, who uh, at the time that these soldiers were fighting in the Civil War, uh, these lieutenants helped these soldiers learn how to read, sitting around campfires when they weren't in battle. At a time in America where it was illegal for African Americans to even be educated to learn how to read and write. And so um, I believe that since its inception, uh, Lincoln has been an institution uh, that has proven that when people of different backgrounds come together for a common goal, that much can be achieved. And we're very proud of our HBCU heritage. Um, with me in this seat, we're going to continue that. Uh, in my 18 years of higher education, I've served 12 of them now uh, at HBCUs. Um, when you think about the HBCU experience, certainly homecoming and the band uh, and, and the Greek life come to mind. But there's also this level on HBCU campuses that it's a family. When you arrive on campus, uh, you feel a sense, the faculty and staff feel a sense of obligation to ensure that our students get their education. Because again, uh, we know that it can change the lives of generations to come. And so uh, I expect that to be the case here at Lincoln. And I believe that every one of our students, uh, regardless of, of their background, can benefit from that HBCU experience to have somebody that cares about them. And so uh, we're excited. Um, there's a lot of great things taking place. There's a lot of great people here at Lincoln University. And uh, if you haven't taken the time to check us out, uh, lincolnu.edu, take a, take a look at our website. We're going to launch uh, a new site, a, a new website here in, in mid-August, but um, take a look at us. Uh, shoot us an email, president at lincolnu.edu is my email address, because um, we'd love, to, we'd love to, to be a difference maker in the lives of young people that are looking for an opportunity to f uh, further their education. We talk about being a difference maker. I was in Jefferson City not too long ago. I, I, I'm a jogger as well, Dr. Mosley. Hilly country over there. Lincoln is, is, a, hilly, is a hilly town. Going up those hills are no joke. But um, we, we go up different hills here, but we want to make sure that we extend an invitation to you here through Cascade Media Group. Uh, hopefully we can build bridges, relationships with students, professors or, or whatnot, and get more exposure uh, through our, our media channels here. We are the only black owned uh, digital media company here in Kansas City. So we appreciate your time, Dr. Mosley. Uh, if you are interested in uh, higher education, it sounds like Lincoln University, Jefferson City is a place to go today. Go online for more details. Uh, the president himself gave you his email address. I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell. I would like to thank Dr. Mosley today for being here. We want to give a special shout out to the Blue Tigers, Lincoln University, Jefferson City. And as always, shoot for the sky. The sky is the limit. If you shoot for the sky, you miss. At the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Take care. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.